Hello and g'day! In today's video we're making envelope junk journals. This is the junk journal that we're going to be making. It's made out of three envelopes. If you've got a really short flap, if you haven't got one of these triangle style envelopes, you might need four. I made a video earlier in the week to show you how to tea dye some envelopes. And these are perfect to make this envelope journal. I got my inspiration from Wendy's Journal Adventure. I'll put the link below so you can check out her video as well. These three envelopes go together to form both pages and the cover. All right, I'll show you what they look like. So that's just one of the flaps of the envelope. Open the first page. I've used the envelope itself for the pocket. I've used two glassine envelopes to make pages and they're pocket pages. That's another envelope that is a page and it becomes a pocket. Here's our little journal. Well, one signature that gets sewn in between the two envelopes. Without making a big journal, this would make a lovely gift. Before we go on, and I'll show you how I made this particular one. I want to talk to you about envelopes. If you don't have an envelope that's got these nice deep triangles on them, you can use the stick and peel ones that have got the straight. If you do a Google search for these, these are more birthday cards and gift cards and things like that. And they may come in a set even so you can get a blank card the, with a matching envelope. So look for those sorts of envelopes, not so much postage envelopes like this. These are postage envelopes. Like this one, you peel them and stick them down. So you can still make one out of these straight edge envelopes. These are recycled envelopes. They're new, but they use recycled paper. So this would make a nice big one as well. So for now, this is the main part of the tutorial, which is this one here. So let's get started. Right now to make these up, you need three triangle style envelopes. We'll get to the pages shortly. Work it out. Once you've got your plan on which pieces you want at the front, that's your inside pocket with a blank straight page and then your two pockets and then your back. You have a choice to leave it like this or give it a decoration on the triangle. I've used the Stampin' Up! tag punch. There, I'll leave it on the screen for you what the measurements are. But it doesn't really matter because the way that we do this, I'm going to reshape the flap. So we take this one back out and I know this one is going to be, I'm going to take this one out as well and I know this one is my flap so I'm hanging on to it. I'm not going to lose sight of that one. I'm going to put it in the punch. I'm not going to worry about the slide area for the punch. I'm just going to bypass that, turn it over and line it up. So you can see that it, it, will, it will go in there. Then I'm going to sit the cutting area. Just I'm not going to put it right on the edge like that because it'll make a mess of it. So just have a little tiny border around it and make that top scallop in the top of your envelope. So make it centered, have a little border around it, just enough to give that, that die somewhere to cut on the paper. Then once it's in place, cut it. These Stampin' Up! dies are really good quality. Slide it off. And this is what we're left with. So what we need to do now is we need a second piece 
so we can reinforce the back a little bit. What you can do is you can use another envelope and you can cover the back, the whole, this whole area here if you wanted to so that it's nice and tidy and the same. Or you can just have a little short piece like this and just reinforce it, just the top bit. That decision I'll leave up to you because you will use a whole envelope to do that. You'll, you'll end up cutting that off and just be left with this piece here. If you feel you can use that envelope somewhere else, that will be fine. I'm just going to use a piece of tea dyed paper and I'm just going to cut that and use that bit. So then I'm just going to cut that piece off. So I've just got that top bit, cut that bit there and that bit there. Now before I trim off these bits here, because we do need to trim these areas off, so if you can visualise that, you need to get rid of those triangle bits there and bring it back here and blend it in here just to make it look a bit better. So to do that, I'm going to glue this bit on the back first and then trim it so both pieces are the same. Alrighty, so I'm going to put a bit of glue on that. I'm going to turn it over and make it so I'm leveling it up from this side. This Barely Art glue grabs really quick there you go. I don't get much of a go to move it once it's laid down. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back onto the right side again. From this spot here, right here in the corner. Not this corner here, the one closer to this line here. Down to the shoulder of this corner here. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to put my craft knife in there and I'm going to blend that back into that curve there. Now if that curve has a sharp corner on it, all you need to do is just trim it off. But seriously, that's okay. You can turn this piece over if you want and blend that back in to get it in the same spot. I'm just going to put a tiny little pencil mark there to make sure that I've come into the same area there. That's about all I'll need to do for that one. So I'm going to put my ruler on that pencil line there at the very pivot point and then come back up to the inside of this tab cut and take that off and meet it up to the outside lines of the tab. As usual, rub off your pencil marks. And we've got ourselves a nice decorative front. Right now, I'm just going to get some Distress Ink and we're going to give that a little bit of colour to help it blend in. Now, that's a lot sturdier there now. It's not so fragile. Just a teeny weeny bit of tea dye. Here you go. So we've got our three envelopes. Envelope one has your decorated flap on the front. Envelope two, just come in and put that there. Do not glue this piece down if you're going to do it this way. Once that's sitting in there, close that up. Then come in with your third envelope and put that envelope in here. Then that becomes the front page, one pocket there and a flat page, and a pocket and a pocket. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to put in our glassine pockets. These glassine pockets are going to go in this area here. 
you do need to check to make sure your glassine envelopes fit inside your book of course this is another reason we're not gluing anything down okay we're we're going to hold all this book together with some stitches we need two running stitches three holes and two running stitches now to put the glassine pages in to turn them into a pocket so they'll be a page pocket we're going to put one inside the other and then we're going to tuck one under there we're going to make sure that they're ever so slightly just pulled apart we don't want them butting up too tight so these pockets hit each other we need them out pull them out just a tiny little bit then you tuck this flap underneath your pages here this is another reason why you don't glue down your pages so that needs to be stitched in with the signature and just paper clip that into place because all we're going to do is sew that flap in there we're going to sew that flap down with the signature you need to cut your pages depending on your envelope size I had an A4 piece of paper and I was lucky enough that it does fit inside here so all I've done is I've folded it in half I've separated the two halves just by cutting a very fine slither of paper off that fold line that separates the two pieces then I've folded those two pieces in half and there's my pages so one sheet of A4 paper has given me one two three four pages so I use two sheets here and I use tea dye paper then I put it back through my printer because this paper was super flat I put it back through my printer and printed the dot grid on it so there's one two three four five six seven eight so two sheets of a4 paper gave me eight pages okay so that's how I got my pages then I just trimmed it to make sure they were all nice and square so now I'm going to put my pages in here in this back section you can put it in the front you can put these in the back and these in the front it's entirely up to you you don't need a template for this because every envelope you use will be a different size and every paper you use will be different size so I'm going to line it up into the center of this then I'm going to open it up I'm going to use my halfway measure ruler and I'm going to put a hole mark right in the center then I'm going to put another one at the two inch mark and another one at the two inch mark now I know those three holes are going to catch this envelope here as well okay so we end up sewing through everything we're going to center this up now we're going to open this back up we know we've got our flap inside there so when I open this up just that little bit like this along with this flap here got to have all of these pieces together just like any journal going to have everything together so make sure you've got the whole lot sandwiched together we've got the signature the page and the flap of just these two glassine envelopes just the flap is inside here then we've got the cover and this flap here and we're going to sew through the whole lot now if if you want to you can use little clips to hold this in place if you feel that you need to do that 
and I like to always make sure that everything I do is on an angle. Put this page on a bit of an angle using my pokey tool. Find that hole that I used my pencil hole and I'm just going to push this through. I'm not going to push it through far, just about quarter of an inch because I don't want to make a gigantic hole in this. And then go through to the end one and then the top end one. Okay, so that's all my holes marked all the way through the center right through to the outside. Okay, it's time to sew them in. Now the sewing is not difficult. If ever you're worried about sewing something in by hand, let me put you at ease. All you need is a largish strong needle. This is a bookbinder's needle. I got this needle from Anderson's Bookbindery in Australia. So then we need some thread. I'm just using some upholstery thread. And if you're in Australia, I, you can get this from Spotlight. You can just get a, a small uh, reel of it. So once you've thread your needle, so I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to close my book a little bit and I'm going to sew through my first stitch leaving a long tail. Then I'm going to come back through, I'm going to hold my book back over, turn it over on its backside, closing it again nearly and then coming back through to the center again from the outside and then just bring that stitch through to the center. I'm going to miss that middle stitch here and go all the way down to the bottom, closing it almost again, coming out to the outside of the book. And you can see these are loose. We'll tighten them in a minute. See how loose that is? I'll fix that up in a minute. Then come back to this middle hole on the outside. Keep the book almost closed because that's how we made the holes. And come back through to the center on the inside. Doesn't matter which side you come out on. We'll fix that up in a minute as well. So you want one thread on one side. If you come out on the other side, two on this side, just duck it under there. Do the man boat and just come through there. Take your needle out now. We don't need that and we don't need it quite as long. I probably should have told you how much thread to get too. I just use about three lengths of the page. So we go one, two, three. All right, now to tighten it up, I'm just going to pull it this way from top to bottom of the book, not this way. Because we want this is the way the stitches go. So we're going to go pull nice and tight, not too tight. Don't leave them loose. And then tie a knot. We're tying the knot over, one over and one under this here. Hear it? That's just the right tension. And then tie a second knot. You can leave long threads, you can leave, cut them right off short if you like. Take your holding pins off, use your fingers to close those holes, just pinch them together. And we can take these paper clips out now that we're holding the glassine bag. Okay, let's take a look. There's our little flap on the front. Open our page, we've got our glassine. This one is not stitched in. This one here got stitched in with the signature. See that there? 
So we need to now hold this one into place. So we'll do that by just putting a couple of dots of glue here just to hold it. Don't need much. I probably don't even know if I'll put any up there just here. So we'll put some here at the ends because I don't want it to look weird. But I want to put some photos in here or some ephemera and I don't want any glue lines up here if they happen to show through. So if we just put it in a, a place that's not going to show through, you'll be a lot happier how it turns out. Try not to get any on your other page when you're slipping it in there. And just slip that in to place. You'll know when it's in the right place. You just need that right amount of room to be able to turn it over. See there? And you've got this awesome little glassine pocket ready to go. And that flap inside there, it doesn't need to be glued down, just at the ends and down the center line is enough. You can always press it down with your bone folder just to give it some more stability there. And you've finished the making of your envelope junk journal. Now, do you want to decorate it? Well, of course, of course we've got to embellish. We've got to embellish everything. I'll be back in a minute and we'll embellish it. To embellish a decorative detail or feature added to something to make it more attractive. You can be as simple as you like with your embellishment. Say for this one, we've got our tea dyed envelopes. These envelopes look really nice on their own. We've made something very different on the shape of the envelope. So there's another feature for embellishment. We've got some seam binding that's been tea dyed. There's another embellishment. You can keep this nice and simple. An old fashioned saying is simplicity is often the best. I like it, it always looks good for me. And we've got this little clip on the back. This is a Tim Holtz index clip. The seam binding is glued down and I've just got that on the edge there just to give it a little extra touch so that it looks finished. And then we just wrap that around and I've got this double-ended connector. It's a jewelry connector. Pop that on there and you could call that embellished. You could call it finished. You don't have to go all the way through and collage the front of it and keep on decorating. If you've got the papers to do that, go ahead and do it. It does look nice. But if you want to just do something plain, it also looks nice. This is the straight edge envelope. And this is a Tim Holtz paper. This is the wallpaper collection. These are my blank postage stamps and I've just embellished it and put it here because these envelopes have the branding all over them. So I need to cover up the branding. So I just went through on each of these pages and covered up the branding. There was a, a, a printed line there and under there. So I just got, again, Tim Holtz little snarky quotes. I do this thing called what I want. This is a, a DIY vellum envelope and I've sewn that in with the signature. More covering up the branding on the envelope. So just get creative. I didn't colour this. This is the natural colour so I left it as it is. And I've got my signatures in here. I used a dark brown cotton to give a little bit of contrast there and some more covering up the branding on the back. And this one says, I'm not arguing, I'm explaining I'm right. Okay, here's the next one. It's a beautiful day to leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I love his quotes. 
But you get what I mean. You can be as simple as you like. So keep these nice and simple so that when you put your things in here, when you come along and you find something that you want to put in there, it's not non-competing. You'll be able to add things in there that look nice. So bear in mind when you're embellishing, you know, if you over embellish, you've got to then think about what goes with it later on. Nice and simple, nice and subtle. Everything works. We'll get to this one later. So back to this one. What we could do with this one is if you have a look at the inside, how I've embellished the inside. I've just gone for an Australian theme for this one. So I've put a, a, a poetry page from the Banjo Patterson poetry book. I've just put the front page in there. I've cut that out and put it in my glassine envelope page. And I've got some little, these are little Australian, they were just like cards. See, a lot of these flowers are the um, symbols for each state has their own wildflower. And then I've put a, a little, this is a, one of my mini file folders. You'll be able to get the download for this on my website. So I've got that and I've cut it down the center and turned it into a pocket, just glued it there and there and put a, a corner of an envelope on there. This is one of my old envelopes that I would have received back in the 70s. And here's another wildflower that is a banksia. That is an Australian wildflower. And I've just tucked that in that pocket there. Same at the back. Just tuck, I use this little index clip here to tuck something under. And this is another vintage calendar. And I'll just pop that in there. So if I wanted to keep going here and finish this off like this, little connector does not go with everything here Australiana. So if I wanted to fix that up, all I've got to do is grab something like this is an Australian bird and I've got some repositionable tape on that. So I'm just going to pop it on here just to show you what would happen if I change that out and it changes the look straight away. Then I could also, if I was to put that on there and cut it to shape and start wrapping that around, it changes the look entirely as well. So it's a bit big, of course you have to cut it down like I said, but you get the idea and, and burnish the edges. What you could also do is fussy cut around the flowers so you don't lose all the beautiful color that we've just put into the envelope. And I'll do that. I'll fussy cut around this and I'll be back in a second. So think about your embellishment. If you don't like it, take it off. Don't use it and use that somewhere else because that is a beautiful piece no matter what you do and what you think with it. So there's always something you're going to be making that you can use this for. You'll be able to pop it on somewhere. It'll never ever be wasted. This one here's a little vellum pockets I made a couple of videos ago. They're made that you can glue the back. Because I've got Birds of Australia and Birds on here, you can also just pop that here and have that as your the front cover as well. So if you're not one to commit permanently, these types of things are really good. And the vellum pockets that I've made for the inside, they're really good if you don't want to commit and you want to be able to put things in and out and, and use them later. Now let's have a look at this one. This one here is... We, we made this ages ago. It's a tag in a flip down pocket. You can glue the back of the pocket straight down on there like that. And you've got yourself both a flip that way and a flip down that way and a pocket at the front there. You, you know, like you can go as far as you like. You might not want to put 
a tag that comes up too high above the journal but you can be as adventurous as you like with this front cover you don't have to stick to the collages and the standard things that you see in a lot of journals this is a closure all it is is a piece of hat elastic and a connector again I've thread that through and I've used the E6000 and just glued the elastic onto the top of the connector that connector is just full of little beads and some triple glaze and that just feeds over the top of that there like that you don't want it too tight you just want it so that it fits nicely and tie a knot I use brads and I cut the arms off and I just also glued them on the end of the elastic this one here I've used the the header out of a an old book I think this might have come out of the Edith Holden book so when I pulled that out I just put that there and made it show so it shows from the front and the back and it's like a little bit of a tab but it's just a little mini one right now in the front of this one I've just put another little folder you know you can put anything you like in these you you already know that I'm just showing you what I've put in here things that I've made in the past that I just went to my embellishment drawers and just pulled out anything and everything and if it fit and looked good I used it this one is the glassine envelope pages I've just put some these are authentic invoices or uh, receipts it's a vintage game card more authentic vintage receipts so I carried that through here and put the a, a library style it's more for the color than anything that's a sticker there and these little random number labels come from Tracy Fox so go check them out they are so cool and they go with everything and go anywhere they're great this is just another little vellum envelope I've got the pattern for these envelopes so any of these envelopes that you want to make you can make your own I'm not going to show you how I made these envelopes in this video I'll do another quick video and show you how easy it is to make these envelopes and to get to one like this all you do is you leave the flap off and you've got a pocket style envelope so you just pop your goodies in there it's much easier to use these pockets if they're in something a little pouch like that and then you've got your signature which is the dot grid you can see those little dots there all I've done is tea dyed the paper and I air dried this this is not ironed it's not pressed in any way that is naturally air dried and those papers are as flat as anything then I could put that through the printer and I printed my dot grid over the top I've also got a video on how you create your own dot grid and then I've got the pocket at the back with just some little goodies in there so that one's another nice and simple one again you can embellish the cover or not because this already has got a really interesting envelope it's the marbled pink envelope tea dyed it doesn't need a real lot done to it because of this nice finish here as well so that's that one this one here is the fairy journal I went through mum's stuff and she loved fairies I think everyone loves fairies and I found this book the world of fairy poppets and it had all these different sorts of fairies in it with matching papers so I just found this one here which was the more leafy style fairy and I covered the front with the background paper then I fussy cut 
the fairy and these are meant to be used for 3D. So if you have any 3D images, you don't have to use them for 3D. If they're sitting around and you haven't used them for years, get them out and just use the main image and use it as a fussy cut and turn it into something that you can use for your junk journaling. And again, that is just a plain and simple cover. There's nothing over the top about it, but it looks quite nice. Then I'll put a sticker out of another sticker pack that I found in Mum's Things, just of a leaf, and pop that there. Then I've put another file folder, a mini file folder in here, and that can more or less I've just used that for colour to fill this in. There's another two glassine envelopes I've used as pages and I've just put this together again. This little quote was a gift from Marta at Marami Small Art. So I put that in there. This is a 3D fussy cut that my mum made so I thought that was quite nice to use that there. Some more of my own digi ephemera. And I used the fairy again and because it was 3D she didn't have wings on her so I went to the graphics fairy and I printed out a set of wings from the graphics fairy and put them behind her. So if you've got something that you want to turn an image into a fairy, do it yourself. And then I stuck this little note pad by cutting a slit in the envelope but I didn't cut it through to the back. And the way you do that, let me show you how I've done that. So you just need a small cutting mat and you feed that through there, turn it over. You feed that through to the back and then you turn it over. Cut a one slit there to fit whatever notepad you want to put in there. You don't want anything too thick, just something nice and small with a few pages and you sit that there. And I just put that little bit of leftover trim in there to make it look pretty. And there's the signature, just plain tea dyed paper with a dot grid in the middle because it was just leftover paper and some more gift from Marami Small Art. And that is that journal, nice and easy again. The way I've used the closure for this one is I've just threaded the seam binding through the opening of my tag top. Beware, when you glue this seam binding down, the glue seeps through it. So I just put a little tissue paper backing on the back of the seam binding there. So white tissue paper on the back and I fused it to the seam binding using the heat and bond and then I glued it using the Helma fabric glue. Not too much, just enough and I just held it into place from there around the envelope to there and just that little tiny bit between that area there so it didn't flop around and then you, all you've got to do is just tie it. It's just a, a quite a simple closure. And by gluing it down there at the front and just that little bit at the back, it doesn't put any stress on that tag front. So that is a very simple way to embellish your little journal as well. This one here I've showed, this, I've bought this one in and out a couple of times just to show that you can embellish the front by collaging. So that's just a collage front using a, a paper doily, some cutout stamps. Now you get the sheets of graph paper. They come off a, off a pad and I just cut that out and put that on the inside of the envelope just to cover up that sticky area that was there and the greens just match the collage. I kept it simple. These are rub-ons and instead of rubbing them on in its entirety all the way down, I left, I just rubbed a bit on there and a bit on the bottom 
and randomly rubbed some of it off and then just pulled it up so it tore away and it didn't put the whole transfer on. So I only just used part of it. And then I put the, the part that was missing there over here. So it it's very subtle, but it bring it all together. So that's how I embellished the front of that one. Then I put the same notepad in here. This time I actually glued it to the inside and made that permanent. There's my little glassine envelope for the page and that's tucked in there. I also used the graph paper here and I just glued it at the top here because that's a perforated line there from it being a, in a book for a pad so you can tear that off later. And I haven't sewn my journal pages in yet because I've already showed you how to do that. And this video was getting a little bit long. So I thought I'd, I'd do that one later. But that just needs a few pages in there. And what I'm thinking is I might use this graph paper by folding the graph paper in half. I'll put four or five pages in there and that'll carry that theme through. All I've done with this one is use the Distress Ink tea dye. So you don't have to tea dye your envelopes if you don't want to or your envelopes might be a little cheaper and they don't handle getting wet. You can just use white. I've got a few little journals here that we've created. I'd like to say all in a day's work. But I'm a little bit slow, so it took me a couple of days to make these. By the time I searched out all the papers that I wanted to use and match everything up and work out how I wanted everything, wouldn't these make beautiful Christmas gifts? And they're tough. Like, these are not fragile at all. These really, really handle it. If you use a very thin paper for your envelopes, they will be fragile. But these being the good quality card set type envelopes, they're not fragile. They are really good. You could also add your fabric to the outside of the spine. You can do so many variations of these journals. You really, really could make a million styles. Maybe a thousand. Maybe a hundred. You could make a lot of styles. I'm sure that you'll be sharing your ideas with me. I can't wait to see what you make. I'm Donna. Thanks for watching and bye for now.